This is a video on dynamic memory allocation in C. Dynamic memory allocation is when your program assigns or reserves memory while the program is running. Up until now, you've had to declare all memory your program needs statically during compile time. So, for example, uh, care str bar 50 equals nothing. That declares a string of size 50. Now, the 50 is the size, and it must be a constant number that's made at compile time. You can't make that a variable, otherwise you get an error, and that's what we mean by statically during compile time. There are three types of problems you will run into in business. The first type is you know how big or how much at compile time. For example, your boss tells you to make an array of structures to store addresses loaded from a file, and at most there will be 100 addresses. <laughs> Cold shiver. Oh, I don't know why I'd feel that. Uh, the second type of problem is where you know how big uh, or how much at the beginning of runtime. We're going to learn how to handle these types of problems next. Now, the third type of problem is where you don't know how big or how much until the end of runtime, which is after your program has finished loading or reading all of the data, and pretty much at the end of your program. You'll learn how to handle those types of problems in C2, which is SET 252, and I can bet I bet you can hardly wait. You already know how to handle problem type number one. For example, suppose we have a type def UDT address type, then we can say a UDT address list 100, and then it'll make an array of size 100 of, and uh, we'll have a hundred elements, uh, and each element is our structure. Or we can say care str buffer 50 equals nothing. Now that'll make a string of maximum size 50. Now that's not very difficult to declare. Maybe difficult to use, but not difficult to declare. Handling type 2 problems is a lot more challenging. Now remember, this is C. The language doesn't do anything for you. It was designed that way on purpose. You are now going to learn what VB and many other languages does for you behind the scenes. Now, we wanted to do something like this from day one. We declare uh, an integer of uh, uh, in, called int array size, set that equal to zero. Then we prompt the user and we say, hey, give us a size 1 to 1,000, and then we read that size in, and then we declare an array of that size. So right here we use our variable. Unfortunately, that won't work. It has to be a numeric constant. We have to hard code that value in, at least up until now. This is where dynamic memory allocation comes in. We must also use pointers, so brace yourself. You might want to take uh, pause the video and take a deep breath or two. <laughs> Again, dynamic memory allocation is where you assign or reserve memory while your programming is running. To do that, we have to learn two new commands. The built-in function to allocate memory is called malloc. I'm guessing that's an abbreviation for memory allocate. The prototype for the malloc function is void asterisk malloc and then an integer int memory size in bytes. You pass in how many bytes of memory you want to reserve or allocate. The function carves out a block of memory that size and returns a pointer to the first byte in that block. Now the memory is not initialized to any default value. Think of it like buying a plot of land somewhere. If we were using VB, it would pull out all the weeds, pick up all the trash, and level everything out. In other words, it would initialize every element to zero. But this is C, so it leaves all the weeds in the trash for you. If you want it initialized, C assumes that you'll do it. Now there is a calloc function that does the same thing as malloc, but it also initializes everything to zero. But, <laughs> yes, you guessed it, you can't use calloc. Why? This is boot camp, soldier, and you've got to do it for yourself. Here's an example of how to use the malloc function. First off, we declare an integer to hold our array size. Then we have a long pointer. And now we have a do loop. Now the purpose of the do loop is to make sure that we get a size that is in acceptable range. So basically 1 to 1,000. Inside the do loop, we tell the user what we want. We want a number from 1 to 1,000. And then we scan that in. And we save it at the address of our variable. So we give it the address of the variable and that's where it's going to dump it off in memory. 
and we're going to keep looping while that value that the user entered is less than 1 or greater than 1000. Now after we get that number, which we're sure is good, we're going to call the malloc function. So right here, malloc. We pass in the array size and we have to multiply it by 4. Now why 4? Because the malloc, if you recall, I'm going to the, to the previous slide, allocates memory size in bytes, so in bytes. So in order to convert from bytes to longs, we have to multiply by 4 because there are 4 bytes per long. Now that's going to return a void pointer. So our next task is that we have to convert from a void pointer to a long pointer, and we do that using an explicit cast. Now if you recall, an explicit cast is where we put the data type in parentheses. Now we put long and then an asterisk to indicate that it is a long pointer. Then once we have done that, we can assign it to our pointer variable. So we have a pointer to an array of longs. Now that is just amazing. So again, notice we had to do the explicit cast because the malloc function returns a void pointer and we specifically have to tell it to convert from void asterisk to a long asterisk. Now the void data type is kind of like a generic data type. Well, not really, but it, it gives you a rough idea. That's that's why they use it. It's um, basically you're not supposed to use void for anything. So anytime they use it, they're telling you the programmer, hey, you need to convert this into something usable other than void. As I said in the last slide, we had to multiply the size by 4 to convert from bytes to long. Now often you'll see the size of function used for this purpose. So here we say size of long, and that's going to return 4. Now it's going to programmatically determine that, which is much safer and more generic than hard coding the value 4 in there. Multiplies at that times the array size. Now warning, the size of function works only with static data types. For example, short, int, long, uh, UDT address type. It does not work with pointers because it counts the size of the pointer, not the size of the block of memory to which it points. So however much memory I allocate up here, if I then call size of on that pointer, that's going to print 4 because that's the size of the pointer, not the size of the memory to which it points. So remember, size of does not work with pointers. Now all pointers on a 32-bit operating system or in a 32-bit program are 4 bytes long because each byte is 8 bits and you got 4 of them so there's 4 bytes going to 32 so they're, they're all 4 bytes long so a pointer to a short is 4 bytes, a pointer to an integer is 4 bytes, a pointer to a long is 4 bytes and a pointer to UD address type is 4 bytes long and why? Because pointers store an address. If you recall back when we introduced pointers, all they do is store an address. In a 32-bit operating system, the addresses range from 0 to 2 to the 32nd minus 1, which is why you need at most 32 bits or 4 bytes for any pointer. Now on a 64-bit operating system, all pointers are 8 bytes. That's because there's 8 bytes in, or 64 bits, uh, it can be covered in 8 bytes. Now, if you write anything in VB.net or C Sharp, the pointers are all going to be 64 bit, and the compiler is going to take care of that for you. However, because of the nature of the .NET framework, you will rarely, if ever, use pointers directly. If you do, please call me. I'd love to hear about it. The block of memory returned by malloc and also calloc is guaranteed to be contiguous. That means there won't be any gaps in it. So if you ask for 1000 bytes, you are going to get an array of 1000 bytes all stuck together in memory. There will be no gaps for, uh, for anything else in between. That makes it easy to access the values in that block of memory. For example, here's the brute force code of how to initialize a block of memory returned by malloc. So we say malloc uh, times the size of a long times the int array size and then we cast that, do an explicit cast to a long pointer and then save it to our pointer variable. Next, we dereference our pointer and we put a zero in the first element of that block of memory. 
So that assigns the value to the contents at the address. Remember, the asterisk means the contents at. Next, I increment the pointer. Notice the lack of the asterisk. That means I'm changing the address, not the contents at. So the plus 1 moves me from, for example, 123 Elm Street to 124 Elm Street. I'm going up the street one house at a time. So that's what this does right here. That changes the address. And then I put a 0 at the contents of that address. So I put a 0 in address 123. Uh, 4 Elm Street. Then I move along to 125 Elm Street and I put a 0 there and then I move to 126 Elm Street and so on. So that is the brute force method. Now as soon as we see it in that format we realize we can use a loop. So for example I've got the same line to allocate memory and I use an integer variable and I can use a for loop because I know the start which is 0, I know the stop is array size and I know I go in the steps of 1. So what we do is we dereference using the asterisks and we say the contents at that address is now we're going to assign the value of 0. And then we're going to increment our pointer. So we're going to go to the next address in our, in our block. Now some students ask how come we don't increment the pointer by 4 instead of by 1? Now why would you integrate by 4? Because it's a pointer to a long and that's 4 bytes. Well the compiler realizes it needs to add 4 to the pointer address because there are 4 bytes per long. It's a long pointer, not a byte pointer. Now it does this automatically for you and the technical term for that is called scaling. Scaling is when the compiler multiplies the integer operand, in this case plus 1, by the size of the pointer data type. So for example by 4 for longs. If we were doing shorts it would multiply everything by a factor of 2. There is a problem with this code however. When we start off PALNG values is pointing to that first element or that first byte in that hunk of memory returned by the malloc. So it's this function right here, or this call to this function malloc right here, we get a hunk of memory back and our pointer is pointing to it. Now each time we loop uh, and assign a value, our pointer moves forward in memory by four bytes. So uh, the first time through the loop it's pointing at the beginning, the second time it's pointing at the second element, and the third time the third element, and the uh, fourth time the fourth element, and it keeps going on dot 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 until it's second to the end, to the end, and then finally when the loop is finished the pointer will have been incremented int array size times. That means the pointer is now pointing to the first address after the array. The problem is it's our pointer is no longer pointing to our hunk of memory. It's pointing to something else. We need to back it up to the beginning of our array. And to do that we have to subtract one a whole bunch of times from it or we can just subtract the array size and that will reset it back to the beginning. So with this code we allocate our memory, we loop through it, and set each value in there to zero and then we return our pointer back to the beginning. Now I'd like to ask you a question. On a large program with thousands and thousands of lines of code, how likely is it that you or team member is gonna forget to back that pointer up at least once? Yep, it's pretty likely. That means you'll have bugs, which means you're going to have technical support phone calls. And let me tell you, pointer bugs are some of the hardest to track down and fix. Now, I'd prefer never to have to answer another tech support phone call as long as I live. I've answered a lot of them. Now, I think every programmer should do tech support for two or three months just to learn how brutal it can be and therefore firmly reinforce what not to do in programming. But that's a whole nother lecture. So in order to avoid mistakes like forgetting to back our pointer up, we can use another technique or a different technique for addressing memory. Instead of incrementing the pointer itself, we're going to increment and add an offset to our base pointer. Now here's the brute force code to initialize the array using this other technique. 
Now, remember, this is the brute force, and then we're going to loopize it and make it look pretty. I start off by saying, go to this address plus our offset of 0, then dereference it, and then assign 0 to that address. Then the next line, I say, go to this address, so 123 Elm Street plus 1, so that gives us 124 Elm Street. And then I say, dereference it, and so I say, put a 0 inside that house. Then I say go to 123 Elm Street and add plus 2. So that gives us 125 Elm Street. And I say dereference that and then put a 0 inside. And I keep doing that all the way up until n. Actually, it should be n minus 1. Now you can add or subtract any integer value, for example, plus 1 to a pointer. Now the technical term for that is called pointer arithmetic, and it is very useful. Using pointer arithmetic, our code looks something like this. Now notice we say uh, we have our initial pointer pointing to the beginning element or the first element in our block of memory that we uh, resigned using the malloc function. And I start off saying it's plus zero. So 123 Elm Street plus zero is still 123 Elm Street. Now if we look at the code, we say our pointer plus our index. Now what's changing each time through the loop is not our pointer itself, but the offset that we are adding to it. And then we dereference that. And so the first time through the loop, PALNG values plus 0, then plus 1, then plus 2, then plus 3, and so on until n minus plus n minus 2, all the way up to plus n minus 1. Now remember, if array size is 10, that means we're going to go to uh, elements 0 through 9. So over here, 10 minus 1 is 9. So our loop would, in effect, go from 0 to 9. And that's exactly what we want. When the loop is all done, we have zeros in every element of our array, or whatever we wanted to put in there. And our pointer, all by itself, is still pointing to the beginning element in there. That means we never ever have to worry about resetting our pointer back to the beginning. Ho, 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 ho. And the uh, Latin term for that is uh, mucius coolius, which means very cool, roughly translated that is. The terms base address or base pointer and offset are used to describe the different pieces or values used in pointer arithmetic. So PALNG values is the base. That's the thing on the left. That's our base pointer or our base address. And in index is the offset or offset address. The example I like to uh, use is directions to a party. There's some party going on, and your friend asks you where it is. You reply, do you know where Bob, the base address, lives? And your pr friend replies, yeah. So you say, the party is five houses up. That's the offset, the street from Bob's place. So go to Bob's and go five houses up. So PL and G values is Bob's house, that's the base, and the offset is plus five houses. Freedom and responsibility. Now every call to, ca to malloc or calloc, and this is really, really important, must be paired with a call to free. If you ask for memory and then have to uh, then you have to release it when you're done. The analogy I like to use is VB is like your mom. She'll clean up your toys for you. C is like your dad. He'll look at you, look at the toys, look at the toy chest, look back at you, and then say something like, they aren't going to get in there all by themselves. <laughs> the reason you have to reboot Windows computers every day or so, is because somewhere inside all that operating system the code, the programmers forgot to do that. They forgot to pair some call to malloc with a call to free. Now that's called leaking memory. And what happens is that there's less and less available memory for your programs to run because you allocate some and then you allocate a little bit more and each time you forget to put it back. Now, Windows will not come in and take it from you. It's your responsibility as the programmer to give it back. Now, if it's just an application, you can close the app, and that'll free all the memory for it. But if it's the operating system, the only way to close the operating system is to reboot.
Now eventually all the space gets used up and the operating system either crashes or, or you reboot. So uh, games do this all the time. I'm sure if you played a game for quite a while, a few hours, and uh, maybe you've ever been in a raid and your program crashes and it says it runs out of memory, something like a heap of allocation error or something like that, that's because a programmer somewhere inside there goofed and forgot to put the memory back. The syntax for the free function is free and then pointer. So for example, let's say we have uh, PA int values, which is a integer pointer. Then we call malloc with that, oops, I forgot to uh, cast it to an int. That's taken care of. So I cast it to an int, and I've got that, and then I do some work or whatever. When I'm all done, I must call free with PA int values, and that will release the memory, free it up, and give it back to Windows for some other use. If you don't have a matched call to free, for every call to malloc, you get something like this. Now this is its most condensed form, so you probably never have this in your code explicitly. But while true, so while your program is running, you're going to malloc a thousand bytes. And what do you do with the uh, pointer? Well, you just throw it away. <laughs> okay, so it's lost, it's gone and then you keep looping and so what that's gonna do is it's gonna allocate memory in chunks of 1000 bytes and very quickly you're gonna run out of memory now just for the heck of it I've got Visual Studio open and I've got the code in here so I've got while some non-zero value so while true go ahead and allocate memory in 1000 byte chunks now um, what happened was when I did that, I, I can't get in on recording. I tried twice and it, it nearly took down my computer both times. We got a huge spike in CPU process and correspondingly we got a, the memory was all used up. And I actually had to terminate the application with Task Manager to make that drop down. And it was so bad, it gobbled up so much memory that the recording software that I used to make these videos locked up, and I had to terminate that too. So I can't even record me using up all the memory. So things like that are very, very dangerous. So with more freedom comes more responsibility. And remember, if you are controlling limited resources, that is, uh, you have the freedom to do that, but it requires you to be a stronger programmer and pay more attention to detail. Pointers are like knives. You will get cut if you aren't careful. Now, back when I was a child, it was common for fathers to give their sons knives. Yeah, I know that sounds incredible in today's age, but anyways, a pocket knife was a sign of maturity and responsibility. Now, some of you may have experienced, uh, experienced this in having your father give you one. Now, uh, this was preparation for many of life's lessons. Now, when my father gave me my first pocket knife, he held it out to me and said, Be careful. It's sharp. Now, what do you think I managed to do within five minutes? Yep, I cut myself. And I learned two very important things that day. First, I learned that when my father said, be careful, I needed to pay attention and be careful. His, he was serious, so I learned to respect what my father said. Second, I learned that knives are sharp and that using tools requires care and respect. This lesson has stayed with me all my life. It was the root lesson for all the power tools I've ever used. Knives may seem scary until you start using power saws and you realize you can not only cut yourself, but you can very quickly lose fingers or limbs or an eye quite easily. Or if you're not careful, you can cut yourself and bleed out. Uh, anyways, always, always, always wear safety glasses when using power tools of any kind. So. The, the lesson here is that pointers like knives are sharp and they require you to be careful and work with them using respect and care. Okay, so I've just handed you a knife, which is basically dynamic memory allocation with pointers. And I'm saying be careful. It's your responsibility to keep track of all your pointers and to free any memory that you allocate. Every call to malloc must be paired with a call to free. Now in addition, after I call free, I always assign my pointer to zero. So for example, I've got code where I make my pointer, I allocate memory using malloc, 
and then I say free so I let go the 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 memory then when I'm done I set the value of the pointer to zero now if you want to use the pocket knife analogy I fold the blade so I can put it back in my pocket I'm all done with it now why do I do that well to use the land analogy freeing memory is like selling the land you bought with malloc so with malloc you bought some property free you sold it and after you sell it you are no longer the owner so setting the pointer to zero right up here is like throwing away your old set of keys you won't be tempted to get back in your old house to get something because you don't have the keys you can't get back in so there's no temptation now if you try to access the memory even just read it after you free it you'll get a runtime error and that's not good so for example we free the memory and then I print the contents of that memory well I no longer own that land anymore Windows does I sold it back and if I try to go on Windows properties without the uh, proper you know going through the proper channels it's gonna get mad at me so the new owner Windows might try to might run out and fire a round or two of rock salt at us so that's not at all what we want the following example shows how to read an array size from the user allocate Kate an array of that size initialize the memory returned populate it with values read from the user print those values then sum all the values and then print the sum and then free the memory allocated now you might want to pause the video and take a quick break to clear your head before you watch this so we start off with void main and we've got four variables we need index because we're going to be looping we've got our array size which is going to store the size that we read in from the user we've got our pointer to our block of dynamically allocated memory and then we've got a total variable The first thing we do is we say enter an array size now i'm not doing any boundary checking on this i'm not uh, making sure it's a positive number and it's not you know like a million or a billion something like that um, that would be appropriate but in this short example don't have it so we read in the array size from the user and then we dynamically allocate using the malloc function notice we use the size of int times our array size and then we do an explicit cast to an integer pointer and then we save that or assign it to our pointer variable and to use the uh, analogy of land we just bought our plot of land that's how uh, that's how we do it now we need to initialize it and we are going to, that basically pulls out the weeds, picks up the trash, levels the ground, all that stuff. So we have our loop and we begin uh, at zero and while we are less than array size we go one at a time. And we are going to use the base, uh, we're going to use a, a pointer arithmetic where we have the base address plus our offset. And the pointer never changes so we never risk losing it and that's a good thing. So we say our base pointer address plus our index and the contents at we dereference equals zero. So that spins through every element in the array and assigns a value of zero. Next, we want to populate the array with values read in from the user. So again, we need to do a scanf for each uh, element in the array. Now we could do that brute force. Uh, but since we've uh, uh, we know the start, stop, and step, we can use a loop, and we've already covered how cool arrays are. The only difference is we're using a dynamic sized array, so I'm not going to do the brute force method here. So we tell the user what we want. We say, hey, enter a value for whatever index that we're at. Probably we should do index plus one. So instead of zero through nine, it says, for example, one through ten. But since this is for you, the programmer, we'll just leave it at zero based. Then we read that in. Now there is no need for an ampersand because it's already an address. So remember, scanf wants an address of a variable. Well, PAN values is already an address. And if we add the index to that, then that's just moving it up the street or up uh, in memory. So no need for the ampersand there. Then we can print the array. This proves we read it in correctly. Now we can't print while we populate because there's too much possibility for errors. I've seen it time and time again. Um, you have to do it in a separate step to prove that it really populated correctly. So we use essentially the same loop all over again. And in our printf statement we have two placeholders. The first is for the index and the second is for the value at that index. So we print our index 
and then we uh, dereference because we want it to display the contents at that address. And again, in both of these examples or these loops, we use the pointer arithmetic syntax, which is the base plus the offset. And finally, we're going to calculate the total. So we spin through uh, every element in the array, the dynamically allocated array. We dereference at each element, and we get that value, and we add it to total, and when we're all done, we print it. And the last thing that we have to do is free up the memory. So we delete the, we call free, which is basically selling the land, and then we immediately set our pointer to zero, which is the symbolic act of throwing away the keys so we're not tempted to go back into that property or land and try to do anything with it. So I've switched to Visual Studio and I've got that code here that was in the uh, slideshow for you. We've got four variables and the first thing that we do is we tell the user what we want, we read that in and then we dynamically allocate that memory. We loop through and initialize it, we populate it, we print, then we calculate the total, then we free, we throw away the keys, and then we pause. So let us go ahead and run that. By the way, thanks for the two students that sent in directions on how to center the window and get at the same spot every time. Basically, you right click and choose properties, layout, and then uncheck let system position window. And then you can apply to the future windows as well. So when the program runs, how big do I want? Well, I want a size 4. I'm going to enter in values 2, 4, 6, and 8. We print, we get 2, 4, 6, and 8, which is really good. That's exactly what we wanted. And the total of all those is 20, which is absolutely outstanding. Now, by the way, one of the things I want to uh, point out uh, point out is always let the program terminate normally by pressing the key to continue. Don't just close it. I'll come to that, come back to that in a little bit. So that's our program. Now if we want we can step through that with the debugger. So I'll go ahead and run it. And it's pausing, it's waiting for size, so I'll put in a 4. Now watch, look at our pointer before. See it's initialized to 0 which is correct, what it should have been and then malloc is going to assign a hunk of memory to it and if we look at that pointer now, now it is 003458D8 uh, whatever that is, that's just some random hunk of memory what's interesting is if we go look there um, there's just garbage in it um, 842, negative 842, whatever, doesn't really matter and now what we're going to do is we're going to spin through that and initialize it and now if we look notice we get zero so the weeds have been pulled the trash has been picked up and all that fun stuff and I'm gonna skip down here to the calculate total I'm gonna let it run to that so two four six eight and so using my base pointer plus offset we can see that the contents at that address are two or is two the next time through the contents at that address is 4 and what is the actual address? Will it give us that? Let's see if we can highlight get just the address. Yeah there it is so 3458 DC and 3458 E0 which is what we'd expect um, if you know hexadecimal math that's correct if you don't well uh, you'll learn it eventually and then the contents there is 6 and finally 8 and then we're all done and now notice after I have freed the memory the pointer is still pointing to that hunk of memory so if I wanted to I could go try to dereference a pointer that pointer and try to mess around with the values at that location and I'm not allowed to do that anymore so I always set my pointer to 0 and then I know hey that's that's an invalid all right, and we continue on system pause and we're all done now would be a good time to pause the video and take a break if you need one up until now I've had you passing arrays to procedures using the bracket syntax so for example if we had the characters buffer uh, 50 I love Star Trek and then we called string length on that in the procedure definition you said care str source 
open bracket, close bracket, and that would allow you to pass an array of any size to that procedure. Now what may seem strange to some of you was that the arrays were seemingly passed by reference even though we know all variables in C are passed by value. As it turns out when you pass an array to a procedure with this syntax, so using the bracket syntax, it's the same as passing a pointer or the address of the first element in the array. So this line is equivalent to string length of ampersand str buffer spot zero. That's because the array name is basically an alias for the address of the first element in the array. So str buffer is the same as address of str buffer spot zero. Just another one of those wonderful little quirks about C. Now you could have written the string length prototype and by the way the definition like this instead. So you could have had int string length care asterisk PSTR source instead of int string care str source brackets. Both of them are functionally, and I want to uh, highlight functionally, the same. If you try to declare both of these versions, you'll get an error because they are both the same to see. So it says, hey, you got the same thing twice. One of them's got to go. Now, why did I make you use the brackets? So that you'd be firmly grounded in the syntax for both versions. I always try to use the bracket syntax, so for example, e.g. str uh, source, and then bracket bracket, when dealing with statically sized or uh, arrays. And I always try to use the pointer syntax, for example, PSTR source, when dealing with a dynamically sized arrays. Now I want to make an important distinction here that I hope you remember for the rest of your life. If I have these two declarations, care str buffer 50 and care pointer PSTR buffer equals zero, str buffer is an array of characters and it should be treated like an array. PSTR buffer is not an array of characters. It is a pointer to an array of characters and there is a world as a dif of difference as you'll see in future homeworks. Now remember str buffer is the same as the address of str buffer spot 0 but it gets even more confusing. You can use the bracket syntax with pointers. Oh okay so this is gonna hurt. So I declare a care pointer PSTR buffer and I and it always initialize my variables to 0 even pointers. Then I use malloc and I allocate a string of size 50 and I do an explicit cast to care pointer. Now the size of operator is not necessary because a byte is uh, the same length as character or character is one byte. And I'm going to use notice the bracket syntax on a pointer. <laughs> oh yeah. So the pointers spot 0 is equal to i and the pointer spot 1 is equal to space and then L O V so I was spelling I love Star Trek and then finally I terminate it. Now you will often see something like this in books and or in forums and I want you to know right here now I strongly disagree with that. Why? Because it, the pointer is dynamically uh, allocated and so whenever I'm dealing with pointers I like to use the pointer syntax which we use the asterisk to dereference um, I do not treat it like a statically sized array and use the brackets and I hope that you will follow in that too and hopefully it will make things a lot more clear. So basically again I'm just repeating I try never use bracket syntax because uh, the, the, they're pointers array. So um, you can do this p ain't value spot 5 is equal to 0 that's bad because it's not an array it's a pointer to array and but that is functionally the same as p a and values plus five and then you dereference that so this is pointer arithmetic using your base and offset is equal to zero so functionally the same the bottom one is preferred with pointers passing pointers to a procedure is easy so for example let's say we have our pointer we allocate some memory and then we call it initialize array and so we just say as, int asterisk p int values int, int array size and then we do whatever we want. Now you will almost always have to pass the array size along with your pointer 
to the array because just like with strings it's your job to keep track of the size. Now remember the size of operator will return a value of 4 or 8 for all pointers depending on whether or not you have a 32-bit application or 64-bit application. So you can't call size of with your pointer. That is not going to work. So it's your responsibility to carry along the size with it. Why? Well, because this is C and it's boot camp. Now changing the value of a pointer in a procedure or basically emulating passing by reference is a little more challenging. You have to pass a pointer to the pointer. <laughs> now you've seen this before in the open file code that I gave you for structure stress and part pane. And here's an example with an array of integers. So I declare my uh, array size variable and my pointer to arrays, but I don't get the size from the user in the main function, nor do I allocate in the main function. Instead, I delegate that to a procedure called make array. So since I want that procedure to get the size from the user and allocate space, I need to pass in those two variables and I basically want to do it by reference but by reference doesn't exist in C so I have to pass by the by pointer and that means when I call make array I pass in the address of each of those variables now let's skip to the right side first for the array size that's not too bad so that just gives us a pointer to an integer but oh my gosh for the array pointer itself it gets really confusing because I have a pointer to a pointer notice the double asterisk oh my gosh you can do that yes and by the way you can have a pointer to a pointer to a pointer you can have three four or five of them um, <laughs> I would th do tricks programmatically like using structures and type defs to help avoid uh, making uh, having it be messy but yes it can be done and it sometimes is done so inside make array we ask the user for a size and then we use scanf and we save that at the address of the variable all right so now remember scanf requires an address and that's literally ampersand into array size which we passed in here so that's why we don't have uh, an ampersand it's already an address now when we go to allocate the memory we have to dereference once to go from our pointer to our pointer to just our pointer <laughs> so let's look at that example a little more closely for the procedure call we pass the address of both the array pointer and the array size why do we pass the addresses? Because we want to simulate passing by reference. Believe it or not, this is what VB does for you behind the scenes all the time. Now raise your hand if you just suddenly realized you like VB a whole lot more than you thought you did. I don't know about you, but I got both my arms and both my feet in the air. Now let's look at the make array code. For the array, we have a pointer to a pointer. Arg! That hurts my head. Now we have two pointers. Why? The first pointer is so that we can dynamically allocate memory during a runtime. Remember, malloc returns a pointer. Okay, that's that's why we have our first pointer. The second pointer is so that we can simulate passing by reference so that when we change uh, the first pointer value, it affects the original variable declared in main. When we read a size from the user using scanf, we store the value at the address in the pointer p, I, uh, p int array size. Remember that p int array size is the same as ampersand int array size, which is why we don't use the ampersand in this procedure. It's already an address. Next, we store the pointer to the first byte of the block of memory returned by malloc in the contents at the address stored in PPA int values. We must dereference the first pointer so that the expression is equivalent to PA int values equals dot dot dot. We do that so that the original variable in main is affected and not just a local procedure copy of that variable. And it gets even more fun. Let's say we wanted to initialize the memory after we allocated. We'd have to dereference the array pointer twice. Can you believe that? 
All right, so we got pretty much the same code. We dereference PA into array array size to get the contents of the address and then multiply that times the size of the integer in bytes. Oh, wow. Okay, so inside here, after we get the size from the user, we then have to dereference it to use the value stored it there and then multiply that times the size of an integer. And then we cast the pointer returned by malloc to an int pointer and we save that in the address stored in our pointer to a pointer. Then we're going to do our initialize code and we're going to use the uh, pointer arithmetic. Now the first time we dereference is to get the pointer value stored in inside our pointer. So that's once to get the dynamically allocated memory address. We dereference a second time to get the contents at that address. So the first time is to get the uh, memory address that we used with Ma that we was returned from malloc. We add our offset to that, and then we dereference the second time so we get the contents at that address. <laughs> oh, isn't that fun? Now a better way to handle that would be to procedurize the code so it's a little less confusing. So we've still got our make array and then I call initialize array. Now here's where it's a little interesting. We dereference once to basically get the address of that's stored inside those. And then initialize array, it takes a pointer to an inch, which we're familiar with, and an actual integer itself. Um, now, why can we get away with uh, no pointer here and just one level of pointers here? Because we're passing them by value. We are not changing either of these two variables. We're changing the contents at this address, but not the actual address itself. And we are not changing the array. So that's how you would procedurize it and make it look pretty. Now, I want to talk about program termination. Always let your programs terminate normally. Many times programmers uh, add in the system.pause command at the end of the program and instead of pressing a key to continue they click the X in the upper right hand corner. If you do that you will bypass some built-in Windows error checking code and you're going to find you get a lot of memory heap corruption errors. Oh, actually um, if you uh, if you let your program terminate normally, you'll find that you'll get a lot of memory heap corruption errors. And if you don't let your program terminate normally, you won't see those errors. Now, when you get a memory corruption error or heap corruption, that means one of two things. You went off the end of one of your arrays into your neighbor's yard, or one of your calls to malloc wasn't paired with a call to free. So let me go ahead and demonstrate that. So I'm in Visual Studio, and let me take out my breakpoint. Go ahead and run that. At size four, I'm going to put in two, four, six, and eight, and press any key to continue. Now here's what not to do. Programmers, they click the close button. The program did not terminate normally. It terminated abnormally. It shut down. Let's go ahead and run it again and see what we're supposed to do. Two, four, six, eight press any key to continue and I press the space to continue. All right. Now I'm going to show you a common error that my programmers make. They are going to say less than or equal to. Now the problem with that is it's going to go one past the size of the array. So we're going to go into our neighbor's yard. And now we'll go ahead and run that. And I'll put in size 4, 2, 4, 6, and 8. And it gave me some really crazy total. But then if I click the X, no errors or any stuff like that. Let's go ahead and run it. 2, 4, 6, 8. I get my crazy total. And this time I'll press any key to continue. <laughs> and it should have given me a memory corrupted error, but it didn't. All right, so let me, uh, let me force that here. Let me, let me put it in the initialize array. That'll do it. So size four, two, four, six, eight. Ah, that's what I'm looking for. Heap corruption detected. That's a third level magic's user spell. It's called corrupt heap, so it's a really good one. And basically when you get this, um, about all you can do is abort. And again, going back to our PowerPoint, one of two things happens. Either we went off the end of one of our arrays, which we clearly did by doing less than or equals instead of just less than, 
or one of our calls to malloc wasn't paired with a call to free. So for example, let me comment out our free code and see if I can still duplicate the error. So four, two, four, six, eight. Any key to continue? Oh, it didn't yell at me that time, but um, I'm sure there's situations you're gonna run into where you are gonna get a corrupted heap. So moral of the story, always let your program terminate normally. Never click the X to close it. So in summary, dynamic memory allocation is where you reserve or assign memory while the program is running. There are two built-in functions that make that possible, malloc and free, and they're both in the standard library, stdlib.h. Malloc takes a size in bytes and returns a void pointer to a contiguous block of memory. And the land analogy is you buy a house or plot of land. Free takes a pointer and releases the memory back to window. You sell the house. Always assign the freed pointer to zero immediately after freeing the memory. So basically you're throwing away the keys to the house so you can't get back in. Remember that STR buffer is the same as ampersand str buffer spot zero the asterisk p ain't values is the same as p ain't values spot zero so remember you can use the bracket syntax for arrays on pointers because basically an array is a pointer and so the this second line is equivalent and this third line is equivalent the contents at this address plus five is the same as PA and values on bracket spot five now again I recommend against using the bracket syntax with pointers use the pointer arithmetic um, syntax with the asterisk to dereference so that you always know that you're dealing with a pointer to an array not an array itself you will need to use pointers to pointers if you want to simulate passing a pointer by reference. Remember the asterisk is used in three different ways. In a variable declaration it's used as a data type modifier to make it a pointer a data type. So for example int asterisk. It's used as the multiplication operator to multiply two values. For example int si or size of int times int array size. It's also used to, de to dereference a pointer to de get the contents at the address stored in the pointer itself. So the contents at this address equals zero. Oh, by the way, pointers have been known to cause headaches, dizziness, and nausea in laboratory students. Use only in a well-ventilated area. So I'd like to talk a little bit about motivation. Yes, pointers are hard. Some of you might call them extremely hard, impossible, uh, brain killers, something like that. Um, they will cause you pain and suffering. So if you're worried about that, let me, let me put your mind at ease. It is going to hurt, and you are going to suffer. You will spend hours and hours trying to debug your programs. You will leak memory. You will spend hours trying to track down those memory leaks. But in the end, you will be a better stronger programmer. You are now starting to realize why programming jobs pay so well. It's because the work is very hard and very tedious and there aren't a whole lot of people out there willing to put the time in to learn how to do it. That's why it's called work. By learning these skills and developing good study habits you are laying the foundation for, success, for a successful career that will make you a good honest living for the rest of your life and if that isn't motivation enough well then I don't know what is so you've now learned about dynamic memory allocation how wonderful Visual Basic is because it does all this stuff for you how incredibly complicated it can be behind the scenes and what do you think the next step is why of course a homework where you get to learn to do all this stuff for yourself. So I won't disappoint. I've got two really good ones lined up for you. And that is the end of the video on dynamic memory allocation.